Hi, good evening. This is Floyd Antonio from the Citadel Incorporated. Welcoming you to another Tuesday evening of refreshing when we get together and celebrate the King of Kings. So invite a friend to shoot out a text or an email or a message, whatever type you get, and invite him to come and share. We have some interesting things that will tie into our theme for this year is the year of 2021, year of reconnection. Let's celebrate to him. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. And diamonds and the thing I desire compares with you. So as we come together, Lord, we just ask that you are right now, Lord, that you would prepare us. Prepare us for what you have in store for us. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your cleansing. And above all else, Lord, we ask for your direction. Cleanse us. Rid us of anything that would prevent us from truly worshiping you, hearing from you, communing with you. Come now through the power of your Holy Spirit. Have an apple with us. Take our thoughts, our words, our entire time right now in, in your presence, Lord. Let it be a time of worship. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Sees the nations, Lord, your love is wider than the seas, Lord, your love. Give him some praise. Whatever your day has been like, that does not change who he is. And the fact that he's deserving of all the praise. Worship him right where you are. Invite him into your situation. Turn your gaze on him right now. Worship the King of Kings. Cause he's worthy, yes. And nothing I desire compares with you.
sense. It doesn't make sense to pray because God is not going to answer you. He's not there. Is he really real? But if you can break through all those burdens, all those distractions, you will find that when you connect with him, your circumstances will change right before your very eyes. you for joining us this Tuesday evening welcome 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 once again our theme for this year as you might be aware by now the theme is 2021 the year of reconnection and if you didn't catch last Sunday's message it's set the tone for where I believe the Lord is wanting to take us this year 2021 and so I want to ask you right now to be prepared 
to take a journey. But we are going to do something before we pray. And it's in line with our physical, the physical man. Because after all, if, if, if we're sick, it makes it more difficult to do the Lord's work or even to pray and worship Him as we ought to. Because sickness can be a distraction. And so, take your pens or your notebook or take your phone. You will not be seeing my face. I will be sharing things with you. And um, during this session or the, the others that will follow, if you have uh, a note you want to pass on to us, you can do it via our Facebook link or you can visit our website it's displayed for you right there on the screen we also have a youtube um, place there as well so this evening before we pray i want to divert your attention to the parallel theme that we'll be using on tuesday nights tuesday evenings for a little while and um, we want you to use this series to reconnect you to the source as was prescribed by Yeshua Amashiah. And so on Tuesday nights for the next few weeks, we'll be looking at food for thought. And uh, this evening, we'll look at food for thought part one. And um, if you want, you could think of this series as um, eating to live and uh, the picture on that screen gives you an idea so as we start this journey I want you to think of food in its proper sense uh, of course those of you who were with me at the Citadel we didn't know at the time that COVID was in the air but we did this series and many people said that it has been such a blessing to them they have used material from it and it was helpful during um, the the COVID as a matter of fact they tell me that it's still helping them this time so food I want you to think of it in a very broad sense uh, it's connected to an old uh, English word of fodder and it's also linked to a Latin based word uh, Penis, that's P A N I S, uh, penis, and that word literally means bread. There's another word which is close to that, which is the word uh, Pasco. And uh, Pasco simply means to feed or to nourish. So when we talk about food for thought, I want you to bear these things in mind. Food essentially comes from two main sources in the natural realm, in the natural world. And of course, it's, your food is either going to come from animals or from plants. As humans, our food really is to come primarily through farming or gardening, as if you didn't know that. So, let's just set the primary stage for this right now. And you can make a note of these, uh, these uh, three verses uh, from Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 to 13. Genesis 1, 11 through to 13. And let's look at it together. It's, uh, then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds nourishment or fuel and it was so so food is supposed to provide the necessary fuel for the body and if you look at verse 12 it says the land produced vegetation plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds and god saw that it was good and uh we crown it off for this section with the 13th verse from that first chapter in Genesis. 
and there was evening and there was morning the third day so we're looking back at the dawn of creation and i won't go into all of the genesis story but if you look at verse 29 of that same first chapter of genesis you you will see where it says and god said behold i have given you meaning here adam and eve every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which it is the fruit of a tree and the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat or for food so the tree is going to give you sustenance don't be fooled by the word meat dear it means your, your, your food that's what you're going to eat so God gave the trees the herbs for us to um, to nourish ourselves and and to feed on amen so as we set the stage for food for thought here are some words that you will hear or you might be familiar with the first one is omnivores the next one is carnivores and then there's another one herbivore here's another word you will have vegetarian so for example uh, the people who eat plants fruit vegetable no no discrimination they just eat what is edible they are omni eaters omnivores they eat everything there are some created beings or animals and they just want to eat meat meat only they are carnivores meat eaters the herbivores are the plant eaters they are the ones who will just eat plants now uh, some people refuse to eat food from animals you know talking about things like meat eggs you know cheese things like those these people are vegetarians and so their lifestyle is vegetarianism uh, there are others who eat no meat at all no flesh except for fish and they take my daughter tells me that the word for, for describing these people is uh, pescatarians and it's sometimes spelled uh, pescatarians so those are words you will hear so it would seem to me that um, the herbivores may be deemed more consistent based on the verses we just read but don't let me prejudice your thoughts at this stage I just want to uh, continue to set the stage for food for thought with some statements right now in the world in which we live people are eating themselves to death due to hybrid food you are talking about the white flour the white bread the biscuit the artificial things they put into so many of the food that we consume it in things and some people just feast on this type of food and so they are eating themselves to death when sometimes the very healing that people are seeking could be created in our own backyard space and those of you who know me know that every opportunity i get to be out in the backyard i i do that as a matter of fact i am sure that before this series is over i am going to pre-record a session out in the backyard and just walk around and talk about the things that are dear uh, there right in our backyard you see we should eat to live and not live to eat unless unless of course we are eating from, from the soil so we should eat to live and not just live to eat plant is food so we should eat and drink from this source as is necessary medicine is medicine so you must measure it think about it i say this to people time and time again when you are out in the field out in the orchard i grew up in rural jamaica that's where i spend the first 
several years of my life. And I lived in a farming community. I walked into the, the orchard and I felt like eating. I didn't measure orange or orange juice. I just ate orange until I was satisfied. I would do the same thing when I came upon a bunch of ripe banana in the field. Uh, I would just eat until I feel like stopping. I, I would do the same thing for mangoes, for star apple, you just name it. Because that's food. But medicine, you can't do medicine like that. You have to measure it and then follow the doctor's prescription. I want to point out here that um, when your body system is compromised by regimented medication, it is then that you have to be very careful how you use herbs as food or herbs as medicine. So when you go to the doctor and the doctor says to you, man, listen, um, your blood pressure is elevated and I need to protect you, so I'm going to put you on, I, I could name the medication, but I shall not. If you go on that blood pressure medication, don't then, because you read up that name, and I'm just picking this one, it's one of my favorite herbs. Don't go and start consuming the name wholesale when you're doing it. It's better to consult with your um, doctor unless you are able to monitor your health, which you should do at all times. And we'll talk about that later on in this series. I want to introduce you to some of my favorite plants today. And of course, if you look at that picture, you will see a banana tree in the background. But today I'm going to introduce you to just seven of my favorite herbs. Uh, the one that you f you're looking at right there, those uh, uh, leaves coming up out of the ground and just spreading out there in the middle. If you are from the islands or if you live in uh, South Florida or any tropical setting or subtropical, you will know straight off the bat that that is the famed fever grass or lemongrass. And it has a reputation uh, to have, to, to be an antioxidant um, provider. It has those properties. And um, they tell me that it helps to prevent the growth of some bacteria and yeast. It has substances that may, be, that may relieve pain and swelling. This fever grass, this lemongrass, is said to reduce fever, improve levels of sugar and cholesterol in the blood so that it's balanced out properly. This same fever grass, ladies, you will want to hear this, it stimulates the uterus and menstrual flow. And by the way, they tell me that lemongrass and ginger, which I do use, are two of the best food ingredients for digestion problems, digestive problems. So if you have problems with your digestion, you should consider this same fever grass, the lemongrass and ginger. It has anti-inflammatory properties and that may mean that it has the potential to lower the risk of chronic diseases. Among other things, this same lemongrass, it just soothes the stomach. And so it will naturally help to relieve anxiety. So if you have anxiety, man, just, just, you find it difficult to sleep, just relax in the evening before you retire. Have the lemongrass tea. How about this one? Another of my favorite plants. Look at that yellow pod, that fruit on the tree. Yes, I hear somebody calling the name. It's the famous Cirrusy. And in its flesh, natural form, it can be found in, in, in its, I should say, in its fresh, natural form. It can be found in places such as the Caribbean islands, of course, Africa, Asia, and yes, right here in South Florida. The fruit that you're looking at can be eaten and is typically very sweet. 
when ripe. Syracy tea can be made from the dried syracy leaves and fine. It's used for ailments such as diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, worm, colon cleansing, dysentery, belly aches. It can also be a laxative to help with cramps, diarrhea, malaria. And they tell me that it also purifies the blood and other serious ailments. I, I am reminded of a particular song that we used to sing when we were in Jamaica. And um, it tells the story of a lady by the name of Helena who went to the field with her mother. And um, she developed the stomach ache. The mother sent her home to make the Cersei tea, but the mother didn't feel very comfortable out in the field. Something told her that uh, things were not going too well, so she ran home, only to find that um, Helena did put a pot on the fire, but what was inside there was not serious. It was some other dangerous plant that would have harmed her. So she gave the daughter uh, a lecture on the Seriously, what it looked like and what it was good for. <laughs> One of these days I'll sing it for you. I'll probably start a program and uh, sing about that seriously, but I won't do that today. But look at the benefits that this plant can give you. And it's okay, you can take your phone and you can snap a picture of it. Now I think just this picture alone will make you begin to smell the fragrance of this plant. I won't focus on the one in the background. I'll leave that for another time. But um, this plant, the botanical name for it is the Sadrija. Sadrija. Another name for it is the Vimnia. Viminia. Or the Micromia Viminia. In Costa Rica, this is known as the Costa Rican mint or the Costa Rican bush. But in Jamaica, we know it as the Jamaican peppermint tree or the Kamasutra mint tree. And in some places, it's known as the Menta del, Mont, sorry, the Menta del Palo. Minta del Palo for the Spanish speaking, part my Spanish. But this is the peppermint and the fragrance that fills your house when you smell this particular mint. It is so awesome. Now, this peppermint is used to make a refreshing herbal tea for breakfast. It's sometimes combined with ginger and a little bit of sugar or honey for flavor. It is medically known as a remedy for colic. This mint has curative properties and improves digestion. As I said before, it's considered to have antioxidant, digestive expectorant, so it will help you to get rid of the phlegm. It's soothing, it's, it, 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 it's technically a sedative. Hmm? And it has um, cognitive qualities, so it, it, if you find yourself experiencing flatulent circumstances or colic, if you're passing gas with the upstairs or downstairs, have a cup of mint tea. And uh, it is a source of protein, carbohydrate, and dietary fiber, which helps to lower the bad cholesterol, that is the LDL, mint. So we need to have this mint tea, man. My, you know, my grandmother used to have it. My mother used to love it. The neighbors, on a Wednesday, especially after fasting back in the day, you could hear the burps, you know, from several feet away next door, when this famed cup of mint was consumed. So the mint belongs to the savor family. So it smells. You know, just make the tea in your house and lift the lid off the container and let the aroma fill the air. But it also contains uh, um, flavonoids, vitamin A or beta-carotene. Yes, they same it. So it has also vitamin C 
and B-complex vitamins. And they are a source of the mineral, iron, calcium, magnesium, niacin, thiamine, potassium, and zinc. Wow. So, the mint, very powerful. And um, that's just one type of mint. There are several types which basically serve similar purposes. Uh, look at this one. This one, you might know, it is the mentha spicata, better known as the spearmint, or the god mint, or the common mint, the lamb mint, or the macrum mint. And uh, it is found in many parts of the world, including Europe and southern um, temperate Asia, extending from Ireland into the west to southern China in the east. It is also found in the Caribbean and also right here in South Florida, the spearmint that you are looking on. And um, the leaves are used fresh or dried to flavor many foods, particularly sweets, beverages, salads, soups, meat, fish, sauces, uh, fruits and vegetables. The essential oils from it, uh, it can be used to flavor toothpaste, candles, candies, jellies, and of course, the principal component is the one that has to do with the carvony or for fragrance. So spearmint has many benefits. You can use the tea. You can also use the essential oil. Just to repeat, it's good for digestive upset. Spearmint is commonly used to help relieve symptoms of indigestion, nausea, vomiting, and gas. Again, I say it is high in antioxidants, and it may aid women with hormone imbalances. It may reduce facial hair, women. It may also improve memory. It fights bacterial infections, I'm told, and it may also lower blood sugar and may help to reduce stress. So if you're just joining us, this is the first in our uh, Tuesday night series as we focus on food for thought. And again, I want to tell you that the, 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 the premise is that you can create healing from right there in our backyard. You should let food be your medicine and medicine be your healing. Now, this next slide is not very common. As a matter of fact, I never learned about this particular plant until I came to Florida. And um, it, 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 is, it has remarkable natural properties. It's a natural herb, and it has long been used in various parts of the world due to its many health benefits. This plant is also, um, it, it, it helps the body tissues to contract. So if there is bleeding, it can reduce it. It also helps to regulate the pH level in the stomach. And it can be useful, therefore, for individuals with a stomach problem. So what is that plant I hear somebody saying? Why don't you tell me? Yeah, it is also known as, it is known as the American worm seed and uh, it's, or, or they call it the Mexican tea. The botanical name for it is the Chenopodium ambrosiaides. Ambrosiaides. But you don't want to try to pronounce that big word. This plant is simply known as the semi-contract. Semi-contract, I can remember that and I can pronounce that easily. Uh, now, in folk medicine, it's used as tea. You can crush it and uh, use it as a paste or poultice. You can also use the tea as an infusion. It's good for inflammatory problems, bruises or sprains, uh, lung infections and it can also be used for cleansing or as a pain reliever 
it can also you can use it uh, if you have worm internal worm it's a mid worm medicine and it will expel round worms and worms because it has an antifungal so that's the same contract and if you want to have a second look again I will show you the semi-contract. That's what it looks like. Now the one I just showed you a while ago, does anybody know what this one is? The beautiful to look at. And yes, it too with its purple flowers. People just use it for decoration. But this plant has been shown to reduce depression and stress to stimulate the liver, to lower infl inflammation, and protect the immune system. This same plant that you're looking at, it is said to have um, detoxification um, potential, and so it can be used to detox you or to relieve stress. It has stress-relieving uh, properties. It is commonly found throughout North America and um, this plant is known by a number of names it is known as the blue vervain or swamp verbana or verbana hastata and uh, it is a small purple flooring plant which i just showed you that's the vervain and it's used for all of these fantastic things. So you could, and by the way, these plants I'm sharing with you today, these seven plants, they are right here in my backyard. I simply planted them. So the Verbana astata or the Vervain is a robust, hardy plant, resistant to drought. With a long history of uses in many cultures stretching back to Roman times. The leaves, flowers, and stems are all used in uh, decoctions. So you, you can get liquor from them or you can reduce it to a concentrate. Uh, so you can get use that reduced liquid substance. So you reduce it by boiling and then you can use it uh, for various things. Um, this plant, the vervain, Yes, uh, you can also soak it and uh, people back in the island will soak it with alcohol. In Jamaica they soak it with a thing called white rum <laughs> and they soak it for weeks and then this extract the active ingredients uh, from that. So they do that and uh, sometimes they make tea with it. Now with its potent combination of fast acting acids and uh, uh, phytochemicals, the vervain is quite popular in herbal holistic healing practices because of the cell protecting chemical uh, components of this particular herb. So I'm almost finished sharing these. Now why am I sharing all these things with you when we should be praying? Would you rather go to the Lord and be praying for somebody? Or would you prefer to go to Him every time asking Him to heal your head, heal your hand, heal your eyes, heal your foot, heal your heart, heal your liver, heal your kidneys? And the same Bible tells us that my people are destroyed because they don't know, because of lack of knowledge. So hence, um, I'm not shouting hallelujah, praise the Lord in the traditional sense tonight. I am talking about some plants that have these fantastic com um, properties. How about this next one? And I think this will be the last one I share with you. I promised seven of them, and I think this is the seventh one. I think everybody knows this one. It's known by a number of names. Uh, it's known as the Air Plant Cathedral Bell. It's known as the Miracle Leaf, or the Life Plant, the Love Bush, or the Live Forever Bush. But I think most people, especially those in the Caribbean, uh, they know this as the leaf of life. And in Jamaica, we shout it nicely and we say leaf of life. <laughs> and so 
This medicinal herb is native to Madagascar, but very common in Jamaica and other islands. Of course, it's here in Florida. It is popular. It is a popular host plant, and it has become naturalized in tropical and subtropical areas. And uh, the tea is useful to treat conditions such as shortness of breath, kidney failure, menstrual problems, asthma, coughs, bronchitis, and chest cold. Another thing I want to tell you about the leaf of life is that it's very easy to grow. Pick a leaf, put it in the soil, and it will grow. Just give it some water. I love this plant. I sometimes just pick it, wash it, and just eat it like that. And uh, look at all the benefits that it can be used for. You can chew the leaves, as I just said, to extract the juice. I sometimes blend it with when I'm making my green drinks with other green herbs. So the crushed medicinal leaves of this plant will bring relief from insect bites, mm -hmm. boils, and also skin ulcers. You can crush uh, this moist mixture and then you can apply it to the outer body for sprains, pain, as well as ear aches. So this particular leaf of life plant, uh, if you place the back of the leaves on open sores, they tell me, cuts and wounds, it will promote healing. It will stop bleeding as well as prevent infection. In certain countries, especially Puerto Rico, the fresh juice of this medicinal herb, leaf of life, may be squeezed into the ears when there is ear infection. And it can also be squeezed into the eyes for all eye problems. It means it doesn't burn your eyes. Uh, the stem as well as the leaves can be placed in water and taken daily to rid the body of mucus and waste matters, leaf of life. So. The, the fresh leaves of this plant, when you eat it, asthma, asthma, bronchitis, and intestinal problems will be helped or cured. The leaf of life is said to be good for high blood pressure. I didn't tell you that one. So today, for this first Eat for Life session, I simply talk to you about the fever grass or the lemon grass with its antioxidant properties. We talked about the Circe, the Jamaican peppermint, the spearmint, the semi-contract, the blue vervain or the swamp, or the swamp verbana. And then last of all, I talked to you about the leaf of life or the ear plant cathedral bell, which is the same, sometimes called miracle leaf or life plant, love bush. Now I trust that you glean something. You could plant these, all these, in pots in your backyard or on your patio. And if this has been a blessing to you, um, we generally release a YouTube version of this, which you can also share with your friends. Amen? We should not ask God to do for us what we should be doing for ourselves. Amen? So why don't you bow your heads with me right now? And let us pray. And as we go into prayer right now, I'm going to ask you to just cast all your cares upon him. Lay all your troubles. What would you like him to do for you tonight? You go ahead and ask him. Ask him to strengthen your frame. Ask him to deliver you from the aches and the pains. To show you how to eat. Show you how to drink.
Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come to you and I join my prayers with my brothers and my sisters right now, Lord. And I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you begin to move in that house, move in those homes, move in those backyards, so that we will take control of our health and we'll begin to follow the rules that you have set forth for our healing. We will begin to believe in what you say above what the advertisements say. We will begin to trust you, Lord, because our healing lies with you. You are our, our rock. I pray that your hand of healing will come upon her. Your hand of healing will come upon him. That your peace which surpasses all understanding will begin to rule and reign in that life. And that Lord, your glory will continue to manifest. And that Lord, we will not only be hearers of your word, but we will be doers as well. So Lord, we just thank you for this time and thank you for creating herbs and fruit for the healing of the nation. We thank you, Lord, that you didn't leave us in isolation. You didn't leave us to die, Lord. But Lord, you were kind and you are still kind. So I pray, oh God, that the sins of our ignorance will not prevent us from worshiping you, but that we will admit our faults. We will admit our failures. We will admit, oh God, that we have not done the things that we should have done, oh God. And then, Lord, we will ask you for forgiveness. For you are the forgiving one. All we need to do is to ask. Go ahead and ask him for forgiveness, especially during your days of ignorance, when you didn't know any better. Ask him to forgive you and to create in you that desire to do the right thing, to eat the right thing, to drink the right thing so that your healing can come speedily and remain with you. Go ahead and pray. Now as we are about to part company one from another, I ask you God that you would let your power and your presence rest, remain and abide with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take this authority to cancel every ploy, every plot, every scheme of the enemy on your life. I declare health over your body in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare wholeness. I declare purity. I declare joy and peace and prosperity. We nullify every plan of the enemy right now. Together we nullify every plan of the enemy. In the name of Jesus who is the Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. Lord.
Harry standing here only because you made a way. Sing it one more time. Come on, as you go. were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way I was standing here only because you made a way With your power, perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made a way. And we're standing. Only because you made you fade away and we standing here only because you made away.